In my last two videos, I talked about uh, working with integration on conservative and non-conservative vector fields. And um, in this video, I wanted to just work uh, just two examples uh, where we're not really told one way or the other, whether it's conservative or not conservative. So we're going to have to make the decision um, as far as like which strategy would be the best to approach uh, the interval that we're working with. So uh, let's go ahead and jump right in. Uh, we are going to integrate the following uh, vector fields. F on the given curve C. Um, and again, like I said, we're not told whether it's conservative or not conservative. And depending on which one it is, there's two uh, routes that we want to take. Um, so two options. It may be a conservative vector field or it may be a non-conservative vector field. Uh, in the case that it is conservative, we're gonna wanna use the strategy that um, the integral over uh, the curve f dot dr is equal to uh, the potential function evaluated at the end point minus the potential function evaluated at the start point. Whereas in the uh, non-conservative case, which was what we learned about first, and, um, this is really just kind of, I guess, the most basic method. Uh, what you wind up doing is you parameterize your curve and you use that to get a standard looking integral by plugging that into the function you're working with or the vector field. Oop, kind of running out of space there. Okay, so um, we need to, before uh, actually doing each problem, we will need to check if F is conservative or not. Okay, so um, <clears throat> let's go ahead and uh, get started with that. Our first example, we have that um, F is equal to uh, y cosine x and sine of x. And we're told that c is equal to the line segments from 0, 0 to uh, 3 pi over 2, 1. So um, need to check to see if it's conservative. It's going to be our first step. Um, so in order to do that, since we're working with a two-dimensional vector field, we need uh, the partial derivative with respect to y of our first component here. This one to be f1, this one to be f2. Um, we need that to be equal to the partial derivative with respect to x of our second component. So um, our partial uh, derivative uh, of the first component with respect to y is equal to just going to be cosine of x. And if I do Partial derivative with respect to x of my second component, I'm going to get, well, it'll also be cosine of x. So since these two match, we do know that it is conservative. Which means that we apply the uh, fundamental theorem for line integrals, which is the thing that tells us that the integral over the curve f dot dr is equal to our potential function evaluated at the end minus the potential function evaluated at the beginning of our curve. So uh, to be able to do this, first of all, we have to figure out what our potential function is. So we have to recover f. From its gradients. And so we get f of x, y is equal to the integral of y cosine of x uh, dx, um, because we want to recover it from this right here is the uh, partial derivative with respect to x of our potential function here. So integrating with respect to x is going to give us y sine of x plus some unknown function in terms of y. To recover information about y, we do the same idea, but using our uh, 
partial derivative with respect to y there. And we get y sine of x plus uh, c uh, tilde of x, uh, some unknown function in terms of x. But um, in this case right here, uh, neither of these two integrals gave me any new information about x or y. So my potential function is just simply equal to y sine of x. OK, so now I have uh, the function f that's referred to here in this equation. So I just have to plug in my endpoint and my start point, and then I'll be good to go. So step two here is we evaluate at the endpoints. So we started at 0, 0, and we end at 3 pi over 2, 1. So our integral over the curve C, F dot dr is equal to f evaluated at 3 pi over 2, 1, minus f evaluated at 0, 0. And we had said that f was um, x sine of, or y sine of x. So I'm going to have 1 times sine of 3 pi over 2 minus, uh, well, it's just going to be 0. So I'm going to get um, negative one there because this right here is negative one. Okay, so uh, that's what happens if it is a, uh, you know, we don't know if it's conservative or not conservative, but we just got a test and it wound up being conservative. So we were able to apply this idea right here where we can just evaluate at the endpoints instead. So in this example, we have um, our vector field is equal to uh, 0, x. And uh, c is equal to the piece of x squared plus y squared equal to 9. That is below the x-axis and has a clockwise orientation. OK. So our first step in this, uh, because we don't know whether or not uh, this is a conservative vector field, is we got to check. So we might be able to save ourselves some work like we did last time. Uh, and we want to make sure, since this is a two-dimensional function, we want to check that the uh, when we look at the first component of uh, that vector field, that when we take the derivative with respect to y, that that winds up being equal to the uh, partial derivative with respect to x of the second component. So f y or f one uh, partial derivative with respect to y is just going to be equal to zero, and if we look at the second component and its partial derivative with respect to x, I'm just going to get one. So since they're not equal, f is not conservative. So we cannot use uh, that fundamental theorem uh, for line integrals, and we need to use um, the fact that the integral over c of f dot dr is equal to the integral from a to b of f of r of t dotted with r prime of t dt. Okay, so um, when we're working with this, first and foremost, we want to come up with that parameterization for r of t. And we are looking at a circle with uh, radius 3. And the fact that we have a clockwise orientation means that x is going to get paired with sine and y is going to get paired with cosine, because that's what flips the orientation around. So what we're going to wind up having then is 3 sine of t and 3 cosine of t. Now to um, determine our bounds for t, let's look at a little bit of a picture here. Um, We want the part of the circle that's below the x-axis, so it's going to look something kind of like this. Um, and we are moving from 0 around to uh, this location over here, so 0 up to, let's say, pi. Um, and generally speaking, you know, if we had a counterclockwise orientation, we'd be going like uh, up and over like that. But since we have this clockwise orientation that has been taken care of by swapping sine and cosine, that's what causes going from 0 to pi to come down uh, to the lower half here. So um, we will have um, 
t being between zero and pi. And our derivative, our prime of t is equal to uh, three cosine of t, negative three sine of t, just like so. All right, um, so now at this point, I think we are ready to start setting up our, uh, um, our integral. I guess if we want to, we can say that we can note that f, which was originally equal to zero x, is going to give us f of r of t equal to um, zero. And then my x component is that three sine of t there. So that's what I'm going to get for my new vector field. So my integral over the curve um, c f dot dr is equal to the integral from zero to pi of zero three sine of t dotted with three cosine of t um, negative three sine of t dt. Okay, just like so. Um, so now at this point, all you got to do is uh, take the dot product of the inside. So we're going to get um, zero minus uh, negative sine squared t. And all you got to do is apply just a, uh, a pretty uh, straightforward power reduction formula for sine squared um, to be able to finish up that integral, which I will leave to you. So um, anyway, uh, that's just a couple of quick examples for working with vector fields, uh, integrating over vector fields when you have not been told whether it's conservative versus not conservative. The big idea here is just to make sure that you're checking beforehand so you know which um, formula, which of the two equations is appropriate to use. Either it's conservative and we want to apply this fundamental theorem of line integrals, or it's not conservative and we want to apply that dot product idea in the, here. We can put this kind of in a couple of boxes because this is really important. So, so generally speaking, you always want to check beforehand so you know what you are working with. Just like so. All right, so that's pretty much it for this one. I'll see you guys next time.